Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and uh, we've got some Guns N' Roses news for you guys today. So before we get started, I want to let you guys know we've got probably a couple more hours left. If if not, the poll may be closed already, but you can see that So Fine is probably going to be the next episode of Guns N' Roses True Story that I post on my channel. So it's it's beating the other two songs by quite a bit. So you guys can look forward to that in the coming weeks. And then we've got some more Axel tweets. As you can imagine, it's more political tweets. So he said, such policies cannot continue. They make our nation less safe by putting dangerous criminals back on the street. He's quoting Attorney General Jeff Sessions. And he said, as opposed to putting them in the White House and as Attorney General. So Axel's been tweeting a lot about Donald Trump. I think you can probably expect to see more of this. If you guys follow Adele James at all on Twitter, he tweets a lot of Donald Trump stuff on Twitter. Uh, Slash and Duff, not so much. Richard Fortas does quite a bit. And I don't think many of the other guys do. Like, you know, Slash just does his weird social media posts like he always does. Duff's always promoting, you know, whatever he's working on. And, uh, you know, Matt's always tweeting about dolphins. And then Dizzy's wishing everybody a happy Sunday. And to go watch his band Hookers and Blow. And then we got a follow-up to the MS benefit that Steven Adler took part in. So it looks like Gilby Clark was also uh, taking part in the MS benefit. Uh, alongside um, Alice in Chains' guitarist Jerry Cantrell, and then they also had uh, Mike Inez and uh, Nancy Wilson of Heart as well. So if you guys want to read the whole article about uh, the actual event, there's a pretty good write-up on loudwire.com. So the Rock Against MS began back in March of 2013 after publicist Nancy B. Sale was diagnosed with MS, and Billy Idol's guitarist Steve Stevens had the idea of having a benefit concert. So for the past five years, there's been an annual event as well as smaller events throughout the year featuring members of the rock and metal community benefiting those with MS. So there's some more videos of Steven Adler uh, jamming, and they also had comedian Bill Burr and Craig Gass with Jim Florentine from the metal show as well so go check out the article down below let's go into our next piece of news so we have a new rock movie that's going to be coming out it's actually a sequel to Jumanji the movie that came out back in the 90s with Robin Williams and it's actually going to be named after a Guns N' Roses song so it's pretty obvious and when I first read this headline I said well it's going to be called Welcome to the Jungle sure enough that's what's going to be called Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle and The Rocks promised to honor Robin Williams with a new movie. And um, it's actually, I think yesterday or a couple days ago, snippets of the film were revealed at CinemaCon along with some major news. So according to The Wrap, the movie won't feature the Jumanji board game that was central to the first movie. Instead, the new movie will center on the Jumanji video game. When transported into the game, the child stars will meet characters played by The Rock alongside Kevin Hart and Jack Black. Nick Jonas is also going to be in the movie too. So if you guys want to read more about it, I've linked to the article down below. So we've got a new interview with Bumblefoot. So we had an interview a little while back where he said he had no regrets about being in Guns N' Roses. And then he also said that he has no interest in seeing the reunion uh, or any of the reunion shows. So uh, he was being interviewed on Eddie Trunk's Sirius XM show. And he said that he heard things about a possible reunion of Guns N' Roses prior to his 2014 exit from the band. But he made it clear that it wasn't the news of a reunion that made him leave. He said, no, I was already done. I was burned out on it. I was, I was, and I was doing more harm than good staying at that point. He also said he had no desire to see the reunited Guns N' Roses. He said, no, that would be weird, man. Would you go to your ex-girlfriend's wedding? It's kind of like that. It's just kind of weird. I know too much. I've seen too much. I've been on the other side of the stage, and it's not like it ended pretty for me i don't have any hard feelings now but at the time it was there was a volatility so yeah so he also said that despite this he does not regret his time with the band he said you could look at anything and say what if i took a different path what if i did different things what if i said no and did this instead what if i just focused on my solo stuff or producing or film or, or tv and music he said but your life is your life and whatever decisions you made they were based on who you were who you are and what you're supposed what's supposed to happen so he said so do i regret it no absolutely not if you i would have had a different answer probably three years ago but uh, he said I got to be part of making millions of people cheer and enjoy themselves. It's wonderful. So I'm kind of curious to know what happened with Bumblefoot towards the end of his time with Guns N' Roses. I know that he didn't really get along necessarily well with guys like Tommy Stinson. But, you know, he'd been in that band for eight years. So I thought maybe their relationship would have improved with time. But let's go on to our next piece of news. 
So Duff's wife Susan posted a video on Instagram just showing off some stuff in their house. So it's some memorabilia that she has, but then she also showed some of Duff stuff from Guns N' Roses, and there's some really cool Guns N' Roses memorabilia you guys can actually see in the video. So let's go on to our final piece of news. So there's a radio station that uh, was talking about some interesting facts that maybe you didn't know about certain rock bands, and they actually had a Guns N' Roses featured on it, and they actually said something that I think I may have heard at one point or another, and I don't know if I've heard any comment, comments from members or band members confirming that is true. But I guess when Guns N' Roses were thinking about a band name back in 1985, one of their options was AIDS, which, of course, gladly they didn't choose because it would have been a terrible name. If you guys remember back in the 80s, I think there was a diet called AIDS. And when the whole AIDS thing happened, like, of course, it was terrible for business because, you know, people don't want to go tell them I'm on the AIDS diet. Because AIDS was a scary thing. People would die from AIDS way back in the day. Whereas now, you know, people have a much better chance of surviving it. So, so that does it for today's news. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And uh, make sure you subscribe to my Guns N' Roses channel for all things related to the band. Whether it's news, uh, upcoming concerts, concert recaps, and even just cool retrospectives of the band's songs, albums, and even events in the band's history. And be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to my social media are down below in the, in the uh, description box. Thanks for watching, guys, and have yourself a good day.